In this video, we discuss how to manage a remote hybrid workforce. And I speak with the CEO and president of Vodia Networks, Christian Stradiki. Welcome to How to Business. I am Frederick Weiss. And in this video, I have CEO of Vodia Networks, Christian Stradiki. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. So great to have you. Christian, before we get to our subject today, I'd love to learn a little bit about you and Vodia. Yeah, I uh, I have to say I'm a uh, VoIP veteran now. I'm doing VoIP mm -hmm. for more than 20 years. Uh, started a company called Snom, focusing on the uh, VoIP endpoints. And uh, well, over the years, kind of transitioned more to the server side. Uh, so that's what Bodia is doing. We're working on the server side of the, the web story. And we're making software for telephone systems. I remember we had SNOM in my office a while ago, but I remember it was different if uh, you were in Deutschland, you could see it as SNOM or SNOM. In America, they said it different. Is, it, is that the truth to that? Yeah, I read some people thought it was Swedish. <laughs> it sounded like SNOM. <laughs> <laughs> the right way is SNOM. That's funny. Yeah. All right, we'll go back into all that and we'll go back into Vodia in a little bit. But first, let's get to our topic without any adus being furthered here, which is how to manage a remote hybrid workforce. So the cost of the daily routine has gone up and up and up, right? Things like commuting, coffee, food, we all know gas is out of control. People don't want to go back to the office. So with all that being said, at a high level, Christian, how do we address the needs of a hybrid remote workforce moving forward? I mean, first of all, from for the IT department, it doesn't even matter how many percent are actually coming back to the office or not. It's just that it's one person is already enough to say they need to have a hybrid solution. So it's definitely a topic that will affect many, many companies. Um, and I mean, a lot has been done for the conferencing part. Like we all have these conferences like we do right now, many um you know, tools available, Microsoft, Google, uh, Zoom. So there's a lot of stuff uh, which is available today, which is a great thing. But the the work is not only conference calls. And I would even say some people uh, think they're doing too many conference calls. Mm. There's still like, like the customer department. When you just want to talk to uh, the department, you want to talk to like a function. You don't want to talk to a specific person. It's not to be a one-to-one -one call. And uh, obviously you don't really care that much about video. You essentially, you just wanna get your problem solved. Also you have to see many of these calls are actually shorter. Um, conference calls tend to be actually at least 15, minimum, 15 uh, minutes uh, uh, minimum than 30, 45, one hour. And it can turn into a time killer. And sometimes just a quick call is a lot more efficient. So that's why I think um, there's still a lot of work to be done on that side of the uh, business tools and um i think that's where where uh, still um there's a huge potential and i mean what you also see is like at home uh people usually don't use voip phones uh, never so never i mean we see people doing voip phones at home but most of the people at home they're using a laptop or they're using their mobile phones and that's another challenge for that transition to make sure that that's possible and, and the other point I wanted to mention is, um, which has a little bit less to do with technology, is also like the, the user acceptance is also going to be very, very important. Because uh, I got I got like years and years ago, I got a call at 3 a.m. in the morning, uh, uh, simply because I was in a different time zone, right? And I realized we need something that makes sure that people um, have a peaceful time. And we need to have something that really keeps the calls in within the business hours. If we don't do that, I think users will not accept it. Why would um, uh, employees accept uh, accept calls like uh, 5 a.m. in the morning or uh, like uh, 11 p.m. in the evening? That's um, that's going to kill the um, the software. So we have to make sure that this is uh, within a specified time when they when they actually receiving calls. 
Yeah, that's a great point. With with this new wave of technology that we're in, we need some kind of presence management where, and I think that's you know where UCAS comes in. So you talked about VoIP, so specifically copper phone lines, right? If you have a customer and you have customers everywhere, those customers need to communicate from everywhere with such technologies as VoIP, as you pointed out, which is voice over IP. And the copper lines just, it's not going to cut it. A lot of people, including myself, I don't, I don't have a phone line in my house. Why would I? It's an antiquated concept to me. I'm sure a lot of people do. And it's, it's very specific to certain parts of the world and even parts of the country. But maybe you could go into the, the basics of VoIP and how Vodia services that particular realm. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, we, we definitely living in a turn like we, we transitioned away from copper in my opinion already a long time ago now it's more like fiber and 5g um from our point of view we are in a transitioning where the browser is essentially uh eating up another uh yeah, kind of industry i always compare it to the crm industry i would say in the 90s uh if you're a crm manufacturer you need to have like a windows app but today, uh, VoIP is also going in the direction where you're saying everything is essentially becoming a browser app. So and it, I think when you work from home, the browser is actually surprisingly well accepted. Um, so people say, OK, I have my I have my accounting tools. I have my CRM stuff. I have my I don't know what tools they're using. Most of it is in the browser anyway. Why not my telephony stuff? Right. Yeah. And th that is, I think, happening right now. We have a beautiful technology called WebRTC which is, I think is, is kind of replacing a lot of, a lot of the stuff we had out there. And um, so we, we think this is like um, the, the next um, technology wave um, that's already happening. And, and we as Vodia want to be at the forefront there. So we want to make sure that our software works from the browser. And then you have to see like, what is the browser exactly? Because technically, many of the apps are just browsers today, right? So essentially you're putting the software into the browser, into an app. It looks like an app, but actually it's a browser. So, and I think that's where definitely um, a lot of stuff is, is transitioning in the next couple of years. And that's where we want to be at the, at the forefront. Yeah, because th there's a lot of these technologies, basically like a Chrome shell, rather than make like a native application. But one of the things that you said made me think about copper again and pots and I read that as of August 2nd, 2022, telecom service providers will forever retire POTS lines per the FCC. And their customers are going to have to find another service, basically. So first, can you tell the audience exactly what POTS stands for? We know plain old telephone service, but maybe you could dive into what that means. Right. Second, second why, they, why they should uh, have cloud as their next choice. I don't even think POTS is the official term, obviously. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't even know what the official term is. I probably uh, already post POTS generation. And um, I think most of the people won't even realize that uh, POTS is going to be retired, which is a great thing. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, for us, uh, an IP address is an IP address. So first of all, that's not a big problem. The problem is that uh, if you are having people working from home, they're behind a firewall. And they are, um, you know, they um, are coming from different IP addresses and you cannot run a service uh, reliably if you're having routing problems because you're running it on your, on your own premise, on your, like in your, in your LAN, in the, in the office LAN. It's just overcomplicating things a lot. That's why it's a lot easier to just say, just put that server somewhere on, a, on an address that's visible to everybody in the whole world. And then they can essentially work from anywhere in the world. And um, that's why the cloud services are so popular for, for communication services. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, especially for things like redundancy that, you know, you could have one cloud and have your service switch over to the other mm -hmm. almost seamlessly. And it, it's amazing. There's an additional amount of services and industries that are attaching themselves to this, not only to fit the need of the, the pandemic, post pandemic, but this is the way that people are wanting to do things moving forward. And specifically, I want to jump into telehealth. There are more and more people looking for telehealth services these days. And I believe that your company, Vodia, also provides HIPAA compliance. So that being said, and HIPAA compliance is, is very important to telehealth. So can you give us a quick overview of exactly what 
HIPAA is and why it's so important and how Vodia services in that realm. Yeah, I mean, we're, I'm, I'm definitely not the biggest HIPAA expert, but uh, at the end of the day, there is uh, private data and there's very private data. And I think that's what HIPAA is mostly about because it's just certain information you don't want to have anybody leak out. Like if you if you have an appointment with some, um, let's say, um, a cancer doctor or something, you don't want this to become public to anyone. And that's why I think there are a lot more strict requirements on how to handle that kind of data for the, for the medical industry. That's why there are just higher standards on, on, on what it means to process, to store uh, this kind of sensitive data. And for, for us, um, it's uh, maybe a little bit easier than for others because uh, as we can say you can, like these service providers can run the service really on their own. We have no access, we don't want to have access and they can really control who has access and I think there's a lot more opportunities to keep the, the service really uh, locked down only for the parties that need to access the servers and make sure that this that kind of data is uh, not leaking out. Talking about services such as this, how easy is it for an organization to move their IT infrastructure to the cloud? First off, is it easy? Second, how does this affect the bottom line? Is this an instant cost savings thing? So I, I'm a big fan of expectation management. I, I would not make the mistake of saying it's easy peasy. Of course, it's always uh, the devil is more like in the detail. So people have to right. prepare for some work. However, I have to say that uh, most of the, the, the projects that we've seen uh, were successful. So um, uh, that's why uh, it's uh, usually not a big deal. Of course, the question is, if you have, if you want to keep your existing system running, you can actually say you're setting up a second phone system in the cloud. For example, what some people are doing is setting up a second system only for the home, people work from home. And the staff that is working on site is keep using the existing one. And they can do some call redirection stuff so that the calls are being redirected to the second PBX and then they get to the employees working from home. So there are a couple of things you can do to make the transition easier. And then, however, in it's kind of smooth migrating step by step, I, I would say over a couple of months or maybe years, then they're eventually going to be all in the cloud. That is a, a way to um, to really make it a very simple and smooth migration. Um, cost savings, uh, of course, uh, is is always an important thing. Uh, however, my my point is usually it's it's more about productivity improvements. Like, for example, if you work from home, it's obviously a huge productivity improvement if you can get, a, get a, an, an issue resolved within month, one minute instead of 15 minutes. I mean, you do the math in terms of how much dollars you're saving by making people more efficient. It's still totally underestimated. I mean, people talking about a few dollars per month for a phone system. However, if they inc increase the productivity of an employee by just 1%, even the most expensive phone system already breaks even, that's why we're so much focused on, on productivity and making people work as productive as possible from home and also from the office. I think that's where the, the real benefits are for a phone system. Maybe you could dive into how Vodia is providing these services and maybe you could tell us an overview about the company itself and maybe some of its other services. Yeah, I mean, we have like an endless list of features. I don't want to go through that right now, but... Uh, but we, we listen very carefully when people come and saying, hey, do you have this and that feature? Our favorite answer is yes, I have a setting for that. But if we don't have it, then we say, okay, does that help for people work more productively? And, and then we usually um, see what we can do to make it happen. For example, we have this thing that we uh, can say, you can pick up a phone call on the desktop phone or on your mobile app or on a desktop app. You really can pick it up from anywhere. Um, and like reporting stuff. So we're reporting like what happened to like an, uh, an a queue at the end of the week, at the end of the month, so that the managers see a little bit more what's going on. So we really try to um, come up with um, things that really help companies um, do better communication and, and stuff. And okay, spam is another one, right? The spam problem. <laughs> so we, we don't want to have employees being spent by, um, by useless callers and if you do the math again how much like one minute or ten minute of of spam how much that costs actually it's uh it's a very obvious that we have to do everything to make the spam uh, as little as possible so we're, we're definitely working that space as well so um anyway we have a lot of things for um making it as productive as possible yeah
Excellent. And where can people find out more on you and Vodia? Yeah, we have obviously a webpage, Vodia.com, where we try to keep everything up to date. And uh, I have a LinkedIn page, my personal LinkedIn page, where I sometimes share some articles. And if you want to connect, send me a connection request. I'll um, gladly take a look at it. Excellent. Christian, at the end here, I want to provide you an opportunity to give us some closing words of wisdom. Yeah, I don't know. My recent uh, discovery is that uh, positive thinkers are um, not living longer, but live, live more happily. So I, I, I try to really um, think more positively. I think that we have uh, great things ahead of us. And um, of course, we should work hard on it. And uh, it's going to be fun. If we uh, forget a little bit about the negative stuff and uh, focus more on the positive stuff, I think that's a, that's a great thing. I love that. Yeah, because 99% of that, those things never happen. It's, it's mostly just in your head. So keep positive and put positivity out in the universe and it will come back to you. Yeah, great advice. Exactly. Yeah. Well, hey, Christian, thank you so much. It's truly been a pleasure. Really enjoyed having you on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. 